Hello, I'm Nathan Johanning, Extension Educator for the University of Illinois Extension. We are here at the Belleville Research Center and we are looking at some of our pumpkin variety trials from our pumpkin field day. So we're going to take a little walkthrough of the varieties we have. In this video we are going to talk about the different specialty pumpkins we have. So your tans, your reds, your whites, your warties and things like that. So I will go ahead and just jump right into uh, these varieties. In this trial, uh, we did have, uh, uh, we had this trial no-tilled after wheat. And so we have a very, had a very wet season, but we were still able to get good pumpkin growth, uh, especially on this part of our trial. So heading to start off with, we have autumn buckskin. Autumn buckskin is a, a really nice, uh, Machada type, so it is a processing type pumpkin um, similar to some of our butternut squash and things of those sorts. It has a very nice tan color. Shape does vary. It can be a little more flat like some of these. However, some of them have a more rounded and upright uh, appearance similar to some of our processing types. It is a, a great variety for that nice classic tan color. Also is another one that's great for cooking. Uh, for if you have people that are interested in using that for making pies or other things, if that's a market of interest. So uh, that is autumn buckskin. Fairly, uh, I would say fairly moderate yielding. Uh, yield some cases a variety of sizes. A lot of it depended on the season and, and weather conditions, but, but a nice uh, tan colored specialty pumpkin. So next we have a blue variety. This is Blue Doll. Uh, blue Doll is uh, a, in the Maxima type, so it has this round stem. Also great eating quality. It's very similar to the Blue Jaredale. The main difference between Blue Jaredale and the Blue Doll in appearance is that uh, Blue Doll is fairly tall and, and has kind of more of a slightly blocky appearance. Here you can see this one has is a pretty good indicator of that. that that tall shape uh, versus a Jaredale, which is more uh, more rounded, maybe a little bit more similar to this, but it has that very unique kind of blocky rib shape to it. So that gives it a little bit of character. One thing, and I don't have an example here, one thing you do notice about Blue Doll, and I've seen this through many years in trials, is that it does at times tend to get some fruit that will develop a split here right where the stem attaches to the fruit. Sometimes it will scar over and not be problematic. However, also many times that will maintain open and opened area and that then can lead to rots and secondary diseases. It can fill up with water and so that is one issue with this variety. You do get, um, it depends on the year, but you always do get a couple that will get some splits that will cause some of the fruit that other, otherwise will look good to not be marketable. But a nice pumpkin, has a bright yellow flesh, great for making all those pumpkin soups and other pumpkin things like that. Great color, great for stacking. Next one we have is a newer variety called Colorado Sunrise. So it also is a Maxima type uh, and along with that it has a, a variety of shades of color. So you have both um, the, the blue background but also has some of this kind of a uh, peach kind of uh, pale orange appearance to it. Uh, fairly flat in stature so definitely great for stacking. Has this nice kind of mottled color that has um, gives you that uh, variety and different twist on some of your specialty pumpkins. So another nice modest sized pumpkin for the specialty market. Fairy tail uh, and this one is again a Mushata type, so it is in that processing type family. In this case, um, the ones we have still here are a little bit on the green side, and that is uh, the biggest reason is this is a very long season fruit. So this is a 120 day pumpkin, uh, always does come in a little later than what some of our others will ripen. So my biggest advice on that, if you want them to truly get tan, which you can see some of these are starting to get to that point, um, in that case, we, uh, we really do need to plant these a couple weeks earlier to get a head start on that. However, I've seen a lot of people uh, just market them, you know, partially green, 
consumers still you know enjoy and love them and you can harvest them say at, especially at, the, at maturities like this and they will eventually color out to tan they will still hold and keep well certainly great for baking for those that want that bright orange flesh just like the autumn buckskin uh, so great for a multi-purpose decorative and for food use as well so next we have flat white boar so flat white boar is another one of our kind of our flat white stacking pumpkins. Um, so in the trial this year, these were, uh, you know, fairly small in size. I have seen these in some of the cases, almost even twice the diameter uh, in some points. But again, depending on the season, I've seen, you know, varying shapes and sizes as far as the diameter of them. A really nice, generally white color, um, not real high yielding, but does fit a really great niche and market for uh, especially in those stacks to get that nice white bright color next we have mellow yellow so uh, mellow yellow is a people type so like a traditional jack-o-lantern type pumpkin however it has this bright yellow golden color so in this case in our trials this year it was uh, the the color was I would say fairly light, not a really, really deep golden yellow, but, but a nice consistent uh, uh, yellow color. Uh, it is very consistent for the most part as far as its shape and, and size, produces a lots, lots of these uh, this very consistent, I would say around basketball size fruit. Um, very nice uh, kind of striking addition to especially mix with those different colors to uh, brighten up a fall display. Next, we have Jewel Box. So Jewel Box, again, does fall in the Machada or processing type family. So the unique thing about Jewel Box uh, is that unlike others, it does have some of these uh, warts or bumps on most of the fruit. Uh, we did have a couple that, didn't, that had that more pronounced on some fruit than others. However, it gives a, a really unique twist to that otherwise, uh, that standard Machada type pumpkin. Um, again, grows in a variety of shapes, some more flattened and some more round in nature. But uh, again, nice diversity and mix of, of color within that type of pumpkin. Next, we have Moonshine. Moonshine has been around for a few years. It is uh, a really nice, uh, small, peepo type uh, white pumpkin. Uh, so you can see most of the fruit are, I would, when I categorize it, usually around the size of a volleyball or so on average. Occasionally you'll get a few smaller fruit. Um, has a really nice bright white color. Um, very hard uh, stem, usually uh, with a pretty decent length. Most of the time around, say, a four to five inch long stem. Um, stems are very solid and has a really well, well attached, hold up well. Uh, and overall, the color, I think, for a white holds up pretty well. All the whites are fairly prone to, you know, some bleaching and, and loss of color in the sun. But this one, I think, holds up well. And, and while not really large, it fits the bill as a really nice-sized uh, jack-o'-lantern-style pumpkin in a very nice, bright white color. Next, we have Moonstacker. So Moonstacker is uh, another variation on the flat white boar type pumpkin. Uh, so in this one, uh, initially from the observations here, I feel like it, it even has, uh, has a really nice shape and, uh, and color to it. Uh, it has a nice bright white color. I feel like it has a little bit, a little bit more of maybe an upright shape than flat white boar, which is oftentimes really compressed. Um, uh, maybe uh, similar in, in shape to like that Colorado Sunrise that has uh, a rounded shape or if you looked at like a, uh, a regular Jardale type uh, as far as its size and kind of features. Uh, nice white color, uh, again, uh, you know, varies in, uh, in shapes from some maybe like basketball diameter, some that are closer to maybe 15, 18 inches in diameter. But Moonstacker, another, so another option for your flat white uh, pumpkins. Next we have one too many. So this is also a 
uh, a, uh, one of our Maxima types. This is as a unique fruit variety in that it has a white background with these uh, orange to red uh, netting on the surface. When they truly do uh, get mature, this is probably the peak color. I have seen them get a little bit more red. Uh, this is one that's just maybe not quite as far along, but you can see here a really nice, unique color. In this case, we have two that are uh, more flat in nature and round. I've seen them grow fairly long and tall. Um, you'll get a variety of shapes, but uh, the, the coloration is fairly consistent. Uh, as far as yields, um, yields with many of these specialties are kind of variable. They, uh, this is one that does seem to be kind of hit and miss a little bit, like some of the others, that there's not, um, there's not a lot of, uh, the, the yield can be variable, especially with the season and different things like that. So, so with that, it is a great one for some different diversity and variety uh, in the specialty market. So peanut, uh, peanut is a, another Maxima type. Uh, this one very unique in that it grows basically this callus on the surface and you get these very unique almost peanut shell uh, looks to the surface. Um, on this one, the, what I would call the, the, the peanutting on the surface is variable. As you can see, one like this is what we call, some of these is kind of ideal. This one isn't too bad, but you'll see that vary. And so that will vary from, uh, from something like this on to even having less of those on it, just more of a short uh, pink pumpkin. Uh, but, but again, very nice uh, background, you know, pretty sought after and very uh, unique characteristics. All right, next we have RPX 6889. So this is a, a new variety not yet released uh, that is, uh, has some warty characteristics to it. So on the warts, uh, the warty types, this is one that uh, has a little bigger shape and size than what some of them do. Um, the, the warting compared with some uh, isn't maybe quite as consistent and pronounced some they're like this and some a little bit lighter in the amount of warts but has a really nice size to it um, in this case the warts do seem to hold their green color fairly well so I think that's a, a unique characteristic these have a little bit more of an upright kind of pointed shape to them compared to being more rounded uh, uh, but I think are a really promising variety and we will see if that uh, hopefully gets on the market in the next few years Another variety we have is RPX 6927. So this is a, a small white pumpkin. Uh, I would say in comparison, it seems very similar to moonshine in its appearance. Uh, from our plots here, I think it's maybe slightly smaller, uh, but, uh, and maybe just a little bit shorter stems, but overall pretty good white color, uh, coloration. Yield is also fairly uh, consistent and comparable. Next, we have RPX 6229. This is uh, another uh, not yet released variety. Uh, it has this very tan uh, buckskin color. However, this is a peepo type. This is not a Machado type like some of the others that we've talked about. So this one has that, that same tan color in basically uh, a, a traditional jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin. Uh, so that's a really unique characteristic and gives a, a nice contrast to some of the other uh, fruits of those size and colors. Next we have Spectre. So Spectre has been around for a few years now. It is probably one of the, the larger uh, Peepo type or jack-o'-lantern type white pumpkins that, that I've seen and, and ran across. It has a very solid stem, a nice kind of a creamy white color. Usually as they get a little more age, that, that white will get a slight cream tint to it. Also with that, they do have some subtle uh, bumps or what you call wart type appearance to them. However, those are always white. They don't have any off color or you know green color like some of the other warty varieties do. 
so they blend in very nicely um, and have some really nice size and, and uh, fairly consistent and yield uh, compared with many of the others. So we also have a, uh, a smaller variety that I put into our, our specialty category. This is called Sunrise. Uh, Sunrise really fits more into the, uh, the gourd scenario, but it is a, a really nice uh, small fruit. It has this very, uh, very nice uh, light cream colored background with some uh, orange uh, variegation in it. Uh, and this kind of scallop look almost has a little bit of the uh, of a uh, almost like a flower-like appearance when you look uh, straight down on it, but it is uh, has a really good yielding and consistent, uh, unique kind of you know small pumpkin or gourd for that those smaller uh, needs for more tabletop direct decorations and things like that. So the last couple varieties we have are some of the larger types. So we have two larger white types, the first one being New Moon. Uh, New Moon is, again, this is a Maxima type, a, a larger white fruit. Uh, in this case, uh, New Moon is, uh, varies in size, usually somewhere, uh, in this case, in our trial, somewhere probably in that roughly maybe 20 to 30 pound range, some a little bit smaller, uh, but it has nice bright white color. Um, yields with the larger ones seem to be a little more uh, unpredictable oftentimes so if you can get one good fruit per plant um, that's usually a, a pretty good estimation if you can get a little more than that that's just kind of a bonus from there but especially for an early set um, you know it's uh, does does well has a, a nice color and shape remember sometimes with this and even some of the other ones we talked about if you really do want the, the perfect shape, you may need to orient them a little bit and make sure they're sitting upright. They will tend to get, if they're laying on their side, which is often how they grow, they will tend to get a flat spot where they lay, especially some of the larger ones as they grow and develop. Um, but oftentimes that still uh, is very marketable and uh, certainly do not have to do anything to them by nature to get some nice fruit. The last variety we have uh, which is in the specialty type is polar bear. So polar bear again is a maxima type. So has that round stem, uh, bright white color. Uh, polar bear overall is a larger fruited variety than what new moon is. Uh, so fruit weight in this case, we're somewhere probably in that 20 on up to maybe 40 pound range. However, I've already seen polar bears in other cases where polar bears have been upwards of 50 and on up to even uh, 85, 90, even closer to 100 pounds on some fruit. Um, not necessarily all of them, but certainly you can, can get larger, a much larger size fruit. Again, I think very similar to New Moon, just a little bit larger in size and gives you uh, uh, some nice diversity to kind of highlight a display with a larger uh, white fruit. So that's a little synopsis of our specialty pumpkins in our pumpkin variety trial. So I appreciate your interest in this and certainly if you have any questions you can contact uh, me at my contact information below and we will look forward to other videos where we share other highlights from varieties in our trials.